Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me for our Bible reading plan devotion. Today, we are beginning a new book in our Bible reading plan, the book of Ezekiel, the prophet in the Old Testament. We're in uh, chapter one. And I don't know if you've ever really read and studied Ezekiel in the past. Uh, you know, he was a great prophet and his book is a great book to read, but I think it intimidates a lot of people. And part of my hope for you in the next uh, several days, next two, three weeks, is that uh, Ezekiel's book uh, becomes more easy for you, easier for you to understand and, and comes alive for you. Um, in chapter 1 and following, chapters 1, chapter 2, Ezekiel receives his call to ministry, call to be a prophet from God. He's 30 years old <clears throat> when this takes place, living in Babylon, not back in Judah, his home. Because five years earlier, when he was 25 years old, he was taken as a captive to Babylon. The uh, dominant empire in that uh, part of the world for a number of years had been Assyria. Assyria is the country that in 722 B.C. destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel and deported the ten tribes, and they were settled in various parts of, of Syria, Babylon, Mesopotamia, and so on. And now you jump ahead more than 100 years, Babylon conquers Assyria in 612 B.C. and becomes the dominant empire. And then uh, five, five, six years later, around 60, well, I guess 605 B.C., I think it is, they defeat Egypt, and when that happens, they become the dominant force over the southern kingdom of Judah, the two remaining tribes with the capital at Jerusalem. And at that time, Judah becomes a vassal state to Babylon, meaning they begin paying taxes, tribute to Babylon. And when that happens, uh, a few of the sharpest, most intelligent young men are taken by Babylon as captives to Babylon. This is, like I said, around 605 B.C., and Daniel is the young man who's taken to Babylon. You jump ahead a few years, and the king of Judah stops paying those taxes, stops paying the tribute. And uh, Babylon brings its army to Jerusalem, besieges the city, and the city surrenders. And they begin paying the taxes again. And this time, Babylon deports a lot of the leading citizens, a lot of the government officials, the, the brightest and best that, 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 that ran the country. They, they deport them and resettle them in Babylon. And in that group, there's a young 25-year-old priest named Ezekiel. So in 605 or so, Daniel is taken as a captive to Babylon. Now about 598, 97 B.C., Ezekiel is taken as a captive to Babylon, and five years after he's taken there, so about 592, 93 B.C., Ezekiel receives this vision, and he would continue for many years to serve as a prophet in Babylon, never going back home to Jerusalem or Judah. He would die in Babylon. And he's 30 years old when he receives this vision and call from God because in the Jewish tradition, uh, a priest was 30 years old when he began formally serving in the role of a priest. That's also why Jesus was 30 years old when he was baptized by John in the Jordan River and began his public ministry. That was part of the Jewish culture, the Jewish tradition. And so Ezekiel is over in Babylon and about... Um, Oh, five years after this, um, Judah will rebel and, and Babylon will destroy Jerusalem and more captives are taken to Babylon. And so Ezekiel is ministering to all these captives over in Babylon where while Daniel is, is, um, is uh, ministering to the government officials in Babylon, if you will, and back in Jerusalem and Judea is Jeremiah, the prophet, who is ministering to the people that are left behind. So you have Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all living, preaching, ministering, serving God as prophets and leaders at essentially the same time. And there is a lot of symbolic language. Don't get hung up on all the details. This is symbolic language. And so he has this vision of a chariot carrying God's throne uh, to the river where he's at, and God calls him into ministry. So let's read just real quickly some verses, verses 1 through 3. It says, It came about in the 30th year, when Ezekiel was 30 years old, on the fifth day of the fourth month while he was by this particular river with the exiles, 
the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. And those visions continue beyond chapter 1. And then he says, it was on the fifth of the month in the fifth year of uh, of King Jehoiakim's exile. Jehoiakim was the king that surrendered during that 598-97 siege of Jerusalem. And he was taken along with many of the leading citizens and Ezekiel as a captive. So five years, that's how we're able to date this. And he says in verse 3, the word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest in the land of the Chaldeans by this river. And that's where the hand of the Lord. So this is his call to ministry. And he goes on to have this vision. As, and as the angels, these, these uh, cherubim, get closer to where he is, carrying the throne of God, and God is seated on the expanse above, it, the vision gets clearer and clearer to him. So you can read that, and it's and it's very, very vivid description. Now what speaks to me devotionally is the way Ezekiel responded when he had this vision of God at his call to ministry. And it's found in verse 28, where he says, As the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding radiance. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So he has this this vision of the majesty, the glory, the brightness, the brilliance of God. And he says, when he saw it, at the end of verse 28, when he saw it, I fell on my face. I fell on my face and heard a voice speaking. Tomorrow in chapter 2, we'll see what God said to him. But he has this vision of God and he falls prostrate on the ground. He fell on his face. That is exactly what occurs in Revelation before the throne of God. That is exactly what you and I will do when we see Jesus. It makes sense we do it in the here and now. So when was the last time you lay on the floor of your house, prostrate before God? Why haven't you? When was the last time you got on your knees to pray? Why haven't you? When was the last time you knelt on the kneeling bench at the altar in a worship service at First Baptist Church? Why haven't you? Are you greater than Ezekiel? Am I greater than Ezekiel? There are moments in life when all of us need to be flat on our face before holy God. Moments when all of us need to bend our knees in submission to Almighty God. And if it's been a long, long time since you did that, if you're physically able, why's it been so long? And what are you going to do about it? That's the word for today. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.